Right, I'm the artist taxi driver. This, my friends, is Melanie Strickland. How are you doing, Melanie? I'm, I'm well, thanks. Melanie was arrested along with a group of how many people? I think there are nine of us in total at this particular action. <laughs> so you were arrested at the DSEI, the Defence Security Equipment International, in September. Quoted, Britain's national treasure. It is actually the world's largest arm fair. What were you arrested for? Um, we were arrested on 8th of September as part of the Occupy versus the Arms Fair um, day of action. Um, and it was for obstruction of the highway. Um, people got arrested for doing different actions, but myself, I was arrested for stopping an HGV trailer that was coming out of the Excel Centre, um, where the Arms Fair takes place and getting underneath it with two other women. You, you, you went under a HGV as it was moving? Well, we, we'd stopped it, so yeah. it stopped, and then, and then we got underneath it. And the purpose was to um, stop the traffic from entering into the arms fair, to stop the setting up of the arms fair. Wow, that was extremely brave. Well, uh, perhaps, but, um, you know, people are dying. <laughs> People are being terrorised in other countries um, because of what happens in the arms yeah. fair. And, you know, for me, it wasn't enough just to hold up a, pla a placard yeah. and say, I disagree with this. You know, I wanted to do something. I felt like I needed to get my body in the way yeah. of what was going on because it's, it is just so wrong. So w what is the DSEI? Well, um, it's, it's, it's the international arms fair that takes place yeah. in East London every two years. Some of the worst um, human rights abusers in the world are invited to that, to that arms fair. Um, the UK government, in fact, invites international delegations. Yeah. Are, th are they um, involved in, in, in the setting up of the, the fair? They're, they're involved very closely with it, yeah. They provide political, logistical um, and, economic, you know, and financial support as well. Um, for example, the government minister speaks at the opening of the fair. Um, you know, I mentioned they, they, they have their own... There's, there's a government department that is responsible for promoting arms sales, um, which is UK Trade and Investment yeah. and the Defence and Security Organisation. That's um, not Lord Green anymore, is it? The guy who... The Mexican drug cartel money laundering guy, is it? Is somebody else now? Possibly someone else, yeah. Probably someone else equally as bad. <laughs> but so, yeah. so uh, I mean, we have, we have, we've got an arms fair, which is um, the world's largest mm. arms fair in London with, mm -hmm. with um, helicopters, missiles, bombs, bullets, Drones. rockets. But we had mm. um, an MP, Caroline Lucas, mm -hmm. who went there and they, uh, they found weapons with projectile electric mm. shocks, mm -hmm. weighted leg cuffs and stun buttons. Torture equipment, yes. Torture equipment being sold openly at every dicey arms fair um undercover journalists or activists have found that they're, they're promoting illegal weapons so this year it was torture equipment in the past it's been cluster bombs and cluster munitions and other types of torture equipment it, it happens every single time um although allegedly we have some of the best laws to regulate the arms trade um, we are the arms trade. <laughs> yeah, the UK is the second biggest exporter of arms after the US in the world, um, and the UK government has no real interest in. in I mean, you, you can't actually regulate this this trade. It's it's a travesty that it happens in in the first place. Um, but even the laws that we do have, the government aren't interested in actually enforcing. I mean, there's one thing saying that uh, oh, we're selling these things to torturers and that when when we are in fact we're the war war criminals. We yeah. are the war machine. Absolutely. I, I actually um, submitted a freedom of information request to HMRC, who is responsible for um, regulating um, the weapons at, at Dicey, and also to the Metropolitan Police. Police didn't even bother to respond. Um, HMRC came back and said, we're not giving you any information about this. Um, yeah. We refuse to com confirm or deny anything. So the arms business, I mean, I've been doing this thing about the war machine being banks, oil and arms. The arms business is massive in this country. We, yes. are, we, are, we, have, we have a prime minister who flew in the middle of the Arab Spring, first person to arrive in Egypt with an entourage of arms dealers. Mm -hmm. He's uh, 
uh, currently they're planning to go to um, Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the, the whole thing is, is 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 deeply corrupt, and and we're very much the UK government is very much complicit in that. You know, for them, as you've said before, on, on your previous sort of videos, you know, war is business to them. That that is how they see it. It's 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 a business, and it doesn't matter who who dies, who's maimed, who's tortured. You know, the, the children. You know, the, the innocent people it's yeah. it's just business and it's very very lucrative it is and and also um what we have to remember is that most of um uh, arms uh that that are built are paid for by by taxpayers absolutely yeah yeah uk taxpayers underwrite um yeah arms um arms deals and um so Whereas the, the government at the moment is imposing a very, very vicious austerity um, regime on its own people, <laughs> you know, we, we're also subsidising other people, you know, the, the imposition of violence yeah. abroad. So but that's why war is good for business, because mm. if you want to take like Iraq as an example or Afghanistan, mm. that actually all the money that is spent on the war is paid for by funds raised by taxpayers. Yeah, yeah. So every, every rocket, every bullet... Every every uh, tank, every aircraft, every sort of like depleted uranium shell that is dropped, yeah. you pay for. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible, isn't it? It is, it is. It is incredible, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of that. But I think also in America, I think it's a third of the money collected goes towards their their sort of uh, military complex, which is like mm. which is vast. They, the largest employer in the world, is um, uh, the Amer American military. That doesn't surprise me. You know, second is China and then it's mm -hmm. McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you think to yourself, well, well, why, 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 how is this so? And to me, mm -hmm. this is how the, this is why the global economy, the war machine, the banks, oil in the arms, this is how it works. Yeah. Uh, we've recently had like a, a shutting down at Grangemouth, uh, not at Grangemouth, at um, Portsmouth and in Scotland and Clyde. Uh, we're, we're not going to make any more military ships. But it's like, well, what, you know, can 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 we just make some ships? Why why do they have to be military ships? Mm, mm. What is this about? Why can't we invest in in a renewable energy infrastructure system which would provide decent jobs for people? Why can't we have more teachers and nurses? Why can't we put investment into the NHS into socially useful goods? Yeah, yeah we, because we, why why we we we're we're investing in 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 debt. Destruction mm. and death. Mm -hmm. This what, this is our gifts to the world. This yes. is this is Britain that is imperialistic best. Yeah. I mean, it's still going on. I mean, you go to any, you know, supporting um, mining companies, supporting oil, you know, the, supporting dictatorships to protect sort of like uh, uh, themselves from, from their own people, mm. like in places like Bahrain, in in yeah, in, yeah all over, yeah, all over, yeah, Colombia. Um, and it's is getting a, and, yeah. and and what they're investing in is more technology. So what you're gonna what you're looking at is like the new sort of like wave of weaponry, which is um, mm -hmm. uh, drones and more yeah. intelligence, more surveillance. Yes, yes, that's that's exactly where we're heading. It's 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 getting more and more scary, and they're inventing more and more ways to control people and to suppress any kind of possibility of of a democratic uprising. You know, the, the power is getting a lot more concentrated and, yeah, the way capital is... I mean, you can imagine big sort of like robot drones landing down mm. and we we'll all have a drone above our head. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's what, they, what, that's what they, that's their, their mm. advancement, you know, that is yeah. the advancement of mankind. I mean, yeah. we signed a deal, I think it was um, £7 billion with Israel for a defence thing, which I don't think has been fully right. declared what that actually entails or right. what, what that money's for. right. You know that yeah. the whole idea is 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 we keep paying for for, for this. This this is mm. this is an obscene way to mm. to live, isn't it? it? It is obscene. Yes. Well, how do you yeah. think? How do you think it works? In that 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 we have this sort of like collect. What I suggested a collective morality that we're good, we're British, we play mm. cricket. <laughs> You know that that mm. this is this is what they do. They mm. this is about nationalism. This is about the monarchy, the Queen, the British, the Geordie Cockney Army. You know that we're good. We we, mm. we will liberate the world. The Americans play the mm. same game, mm. and it's them over there. 
look, we're civilised, they're uncivilised. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that is certainly the image that the, that the UK government likes to portray, that, that we, um, we're a peaceful people and that we, um, we um, uphold international human rights standards. Um, we signed an arms treaty earlier this year. Um, you know, the, as I've mentioned, the fact that we sell all these these um, um, arms to all kinds of corrupt regimes. What's, what's, what's happening? What's happening with your line. court case at the moment, then? Well, um, we had our initial court hearing on Monday, fourth of November. Actually, hold it there. I'm the Irish taxi driver. This is Melanie Strickland, and we're going to come back and tell you what's happening. <laughs> 